patricide? Bullying? How about propping up a corrupt monarchy? Sonic the Hedgehog has some serious crimes to answer for. Acorn is a peaceful kingdom, home to the colorful cast of the Sonic the Hedgehog comic series. The comic version of the blue blur comes with a hefty dose of lore and a number of characters that never appear in the game series. But that doesn't mean that the events on the page are any less important. In fact, many of Sonic's biggest misdeeds take place in the world of the comics. One time, Sonic even destroyed Nuthole, the peaceful forest village where he and his friends live. Okay, so it wasn't Sonic exactly, or at least he wasn't in control of his actions. Issue 39 of Sonic the Hedgehog sees the first appearance of Mecha Sonic, the roboticized version of our super fast hero. After being turned into Mecha Sonic by Dr. Robotnik, Sonic travels back to destroy his home. His friends put up a fight, but it all looks pretty bleak until Knuckles arrives. In a special issue, Sonic and Knuckle Mecha Madness, Knuckles also becomes roboticized to face off against Mecha Sonic. Unfortunately, his plan doesn't work, and Mecha Sonic really messes up Not Whole Village. The Sword of the Acorns is one of the more fantastical elements introduced in the Sonic the Hedgehog comics. While Sonic is typically an honorable wielder of the sword, there was one specific instance where he let his friends and the kingdom down. In Sonic the Hedgehog issue 89, King Max is rushed into emergency surgery, which ultimately left him paralyzed. In the previous issue, Sonic was supposed to protect the king from Robotnik's forces, but failed miserably. Sonic attempts to make good with the royal family by stealing the Sword of Acorns and going out on a mission to defeat Dr. Robotnik once and for all. Unfortunately, the plan doesn't work, and Robotnik ends up stealing the powerful weapon instead. Archie's Sonic the Hedgehog comics can be pretty dark. In the Light Mobius arc, Sonic enters Eggman's old Tarkion chamber in an attempt to go back in time and solve a problem endangering the people of Mobius. Instead, Sonic irrevocably alters the timeline, changing the future. His time travel undoes his marriage to Sally, leaving her in the hands of the corrupt King Shadow and erases his children, Sonya and Manic, from existence. Of course, he eventually reunites with his wife, Queen Sally, and the two start a new family in this altered timeline. So he gets another chance with a brand new version of the children he wiped off the face of the earth. Yay? Okay, fine, we don't see any bodies on screen, but the electromagnetic pulse caused by Sonic in the live action film wipes out the power of an entire city. There's no way it doesn't have consequences. Movie nights ruined, interrupted chili dog cooking, and yes, probably more than a few deaths. Several online users have speculated about the death toll of the Blue Blur's blackout, with one industrious Reddit user calculating approximately how many babies Sonic's thoughtless actions might have killed. That's pretty grim. What is going on? Oh gosh, I think the power's out. You know, durr, the lights are out. The, the whole town is freaking out. Oh, Tails, dear sweet Tails, you don't deserve anything this hedgehog has done to you. Sonic has always been a bit of a player, but in issue 155 of Archie's Sonic comics, he takes his philandering ways too far. Sonic kisses Fiona Fox behind a bush, knowing that Tails has a crush on her. Tails catches them in the act and is rightfully devastated at this massive betrayal by someone he thought was a friend. It doesn't end there either. Not only did Sonic break his friend's dear little heart, he also drove him to a life of crime. In issue 170, Tails' father is thrown in jail by the government, the very same monarchy that Sonic's family has been participating in for years. His crime? Attempting to bring democracy to the people and show them that monarchy is not the only way. When Sonic attempts to stop Tails from freeing his dad, Tails turns on Sonic. Tails makes it very clear during their confrontation that it was Sonic's mistreatment of him over the years that has caused him to build up a lingering sense of resentment and finally snap. Poor Sweet Tails could only be pushed too far before he would break. Sonic kissed a human woman. Sorry, it's just hard to talk about this and keep a level head. <clears throat> Sega's 2006 Sonic the Hedgehog game has plenty of problems. With a critically reviled level design and one of the lowest meta scores in Sonic history, but his greatest sin is making us all look at Sonic the Hedgehog locking lips with a real human woman. Where is Amy Rose? Where is Sally? Nowhere to be found, as the audience is forced to watch Sonic's clunky romantic storyline with Princess Elise. At the story's climactic moment when all seems lost and Sonic lies dead on the ground, Princess Elise saves the day by… kissing a hedgehog. Granted, it's hard to blame this on Sonic since he was dead at the time, but still, gross. 
and if anything, that's even worse, necrophilia. In the Mobius 25 years later storyline of the Archie comics, Sonic marries Princess Sally and becomes king of an entire planet. Heavy is the hedgehog head that wears the crown, and it quickly becomes apparent that Sonic is not up to the task. Does he use his newfound authority to provide the people with unlimited chili dogs or, you know, healthcare? No, he just mopes around and complains about being bored. Sally attributes his bad attitude to a combination of a midlife crisis and a lack of experience in politics. But the people of Mobius don't stop suffering just because Sonic's never taken a civics class in his life. Sure, it was an alternate universe version of his father, but that doesn't make it okay. In the Sonic Super Special issue 12 story Zone Wars Giant Robotno, Sonic is teleported to an alternate reality, or Zone, in order to help combat a serious threat. In this zone, everything Sonic knows to be true is turned on its head. Here, Sonic partners with an alternate good version of Dr. Robotnik, named Dr. J. Kintobor in order to help save the people of Kintopolis. The people are under siege by mutated versions of Sonic's friends and family, created when the city attempted to harness the power of a split Chaos Emerald and tested it on the population of Knothole Island. Armed with a massive mech called the Giant Robotno, Sonic must take out each of his loved ones. While battling this zone's version of his father, Jules the Hedgehog, Sonic rips the Chaos Emerald out of his chest and renders his own dad a lifeless husk. In this case, it's less about the terrible thing that Sonic did and more about the good thing he chooses not to do. According to the 2020 live-action film, a single one of Sonic's quills possesses nearly limitless energy. When Dr. Robotnik analyzes one of the quills, he finds enough electrical energy to power a hovercraft and match Sonic's formerly unbeatable racing speed. The average hedgehog is between 3,000 and 5,000 quills. And just one was enough for all of that. Sonic can outrun any potential threat, so he's not exactly using his quills to protect himself from predators. Why can't he spare a few hundred quills to power a handful of major cities, or even the entire world? Every day, Sonic wakes up with a solution to clean, sustainable energy growing out of his head, but chooses not to share it. Sonic and Amy Rhodes have had an on-and-off romance since she was first introduced to the series. Amy decided she was Sonic's girlfriend and then began pursuing a relationship with him whether he liked it or not. In one Sonic X episode, A Date to Forget, Sonic potentially damages their relationship by standing up Amy. After making plans with both Amy and Sam Speed, Sonic flakes out on both of them. Amy instead goes on a date with Sam Speed, which leads Amy to finally understand that Sonic helps others with his abilities and that running fast is, well, fun. It all worked out in the end, but it's one of Sonic's bigger missteps with poor old Amy Rose. Sonic, you do care about me! <laughs> in the live-action film, Longclaw the Owl is Sonic's primary guardian on his home planet. She is the last of her kind, a noble race of owl warriors who protect the world from danger. She taught Sonic everything he knows. When a gang of echidnas chase Sonic down in an attempt to steal his power, Longclaw gives him a bag of his iconic rings, which he can use to travel between worlds. As she sends him to Earth, she tells Sonic to never stop running, and stays behind to fight the echidnas. Then, once he gets to Earth, Sonic immediately stops running. He stays in the first place he lands and remains there for 10 years. If he was going to immediately disobey Longclaw's instructions, he could have used one of those rings to go back for the only family he's ever known. But Sonic never goes back for Longclaw. He can't even honor her last request. Sonic spends the majority of his 2020 film directly and indirectly causing millions of dollars in property damage. Not even counting the massive power outage he triggers, he's responsible for car wrecks, destroyed buildings, and blocks and blocks of decimated city streets. His chase battle with Dr. Robotnik leaves a trail of destruction in his wake through multiple cities. He should be sued by Green Hills not shielded from all responsibility with a government cover-up. Sure, it makes for an entertaining movie, but think of the casualties. Their infrastructure is likely permanently damaged, all because this wise-cracking rodent had to get himself into hijinks. Not only that, but he gets an innocent man labeled a domestic terrorist by pulling him into the crossfire. Sure, Tom is eventually cleared of that accusation, but false news reports don't just disappear from the public consciousness. Tom is likely going to be followed by the consequences of Sonic's carelessness for the rest of his life. In some ways, the short-lived animated TV series Sonic Underground felt like a fanfiction fever dream. It featured Sonic, along with his brother and sister, as they journeyed to find their long-lost mother, the Queen. 
The trio have magical amulets that allow them to transform into various musical instruments, and they also use musical instruments as weapons. Considering the strange premise of the show, it makes perfect sense that some wild things happened. Once Sonic and his siblings even took the joy of music from an entire planet. In the episode Six as a Crowd, Sonic, Manic, and Sonia went to an alternate dimension where the three hedgehog siblings were bad guys, and Dr. Robotnik was a celebrated hero. In that universe, a corrupt Sonic ruled over the land with an iron paw, acting so evil that he even took away the planet's ability to create music. The good triplets eventually cured the world's ills with a song. But that doesn't change the fact that somewhere there's a version of Sonic who wants to end the music forever. Is this maybe the worst thing Sonic has ever done? In the 2020 live-action film, Sonic had the unmitigated gall to fart up a perfectly good hotel room with chili dog gas and then laugh about it. That's awful. What did you eat? I think it's called a chili dog? Right to the face of a man whose life he uprooted and whose sense of reality he changed forever. Not only is it a party foul and a breach of hotel room etiquette, it's practically chemical warfare.